Oh my god, can you stop? You're so immature. Oh my god, can you sit still for five minutes? Oof, well, this will be interesting. In part three of the Cambridge First Certificate Speaking Exam, you must talk to your partner. Ooh, sounds difficult. Well, no, it's not, if you know what to do. So what do you need to do? Part three is four minutes if you have one partner, or five minutes if you have two partners. In most situations, you will have one partner, but in some circumstances, you could have two. Now it is time to talk to your partner. Uh, ew, oh my this. god, I don't want to talk to him. He's such a loser. Ugh. The examiner will give you a sheet of paper with a question in the middle for you to discuss. Around the question will be five prompts. These are there to help you answer the question. But remember, you do not need to talk about all of them. You have two minutes to do this. Then the examiner will ask you another question about the topic. This usually involves you and your partner selecting one or two of the prompts to answer a question. For example, which of these activities do you think is most difficult? You have one minute to complete this. So then, shall we begin? Oh, okay, yeah, I guess I can do are, that for you. you. <laughs> now I'd like you to talk about something together for two minutes. Here are some things that people often think will make their lives happier and a question for you to discuss. First, you have some time to look at the task. Uh, so we got like meeting new people, um, learning new skills, uh, accepting what you have. Now, money. talk together about whether these things always make life happier. Like, um, I think maybe like well, moving, moving to a new area. No, getting, getting more. Getting... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is actually a common problem. No one wants to go first, and so at the beginning of the exam, we have an awkward 10 seconds. Ooh, will you go first? Shall I go first? So, here is what to do. The very first thing you do when part three starts is turn your chairs inward facing your partner. That way you are initiating contact and also demonstrating to the examiner that you know you are talking to your partner in this part of the test. So come on then, turn your chairs inwards. Monica, you are looking very nice today. Ew, shut up, bro. That's gross. Uh, Monica, I was joking. Yeah, you look disgusting. Uh, excuse me, bros. Oh. I'm hot. Yeah. Uh, Monica, you look like a boy. Yeah, you've got a beard. Do you have any idea how offensive that is? Oh my god, bros, you're oh, so rude. Oh gosh, Monica, I, don't have I a can't beard. do this with you. Skin. What am I? Yeah, just like that. After the examiner has invited you to start talking. I want you to take control of the situation. Look at your partner in the eye and say, should I go first or would you like to? Make sure you're smiling when you do this. Uh, Monica, should I go first or would you like to? Um, you can go first. <laughs> uh, what, no, Monica, I was just saying that to be polite, right? You are going to go first, all right? Um, no, uh, you can go first. Oh, forget it. Oh my gosh, Toby, bros yeah, won't talk. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I could talk to you instead. Right, not this again. <laughs> again, what a fantastic example. Um, Monica, please just begin. Thank you. Well, like, meeting new people often makes me happy because, like, people usually, like, really love me when they first see me because I'm really outgoing and sociable. So when I meet new people, I feel, like, totally happy. Bros? I can already see three things wrong with this. Number one, Monica, you are far too personal. It's okay to be personal sometimes. However, remember the question was about people, not about you. Also, the more personal you are, the more difficult it is for your partner to contribute. 
so try to keep things general. However, you can talk about your personal experiences to provide examples of your point. Just don't let your own experiences become your point. Number two, Bruce, your body language is terrible. When you are not talking and your partner is, it is very important to listen and listen actively. That means maintain eye contact from time to time. That means nod your head when you agree or shake your head when you disagree. That means make some noises. Hmm, hmm, yeah, mm, absolutely. This lets your partner know you are listening to your partner and it lets the examiner know you are listening to your partner. Very important stuff. And number three, Bruce, you look very depressed. This is a problem. Now, I know the exam is not very fun, but do your best to have fun and it will improve your marks. Here is why. When you are happy, your intonation naturally rises and lowers. This makes your pronunciation more natural and as a result, you will score higher marks for pronunciation. If you are very bored and you don't want to be there, then your intonation will be very flat and it will ruin your marks for pronunciation. So, number one, do not be too personal. Not only, anyway. Number two, remember to listen and listen actively to your partner. And number three, try to be happy. Meeting new people could make people really happy yeah. because like, if they're sociable and outgoing Ooh. people, then they'd really love it. For example, I love meeting new people. I'm a really personable person right. and I really enjoy spending time with others, you know? Yeah, yeah I yeah. agree. And uh, moving to a new uh -huh. area could make yeah. people very happy because sometimes life can be boring if you always follow the same routine. Yeah? Bruce, yeah. like, did you agree with everything Bruce. I said? Very good job, Bruce boy. Brilliant, yeah? Great. The vocabulary here was great. The grammar was perfect. The interaction was terrible. In the exam, the assessor marks you on something called interactive communication. The two most important things that you need to know are this. Number one, make sure you link what you say to what your partner said before you. And number two, Make sure you negotiate, you work with your partner to answer the question. To do this, I want you to never say, I agree. Never say, I disagree. Instead, use your language to demonstrate to your partner if you agree or disagree. The first thing you should do is rephrase what your partner said before you. This demonstrates to your partner and to the examiner that you heard what they said, that you were huh, listening. Then you must link your contribution to what your partner said. This is to demonstrate if you agree or disagree without actually saying it. And lastly, when you move on to your next prompt, your next topic, make sure it is linked. For example, Monica has spoken about how meeting new people can make people happy. Bruce has spoken about moving to a new area. Bruce could have linked these ideas together. Yes, meeting new people can make people happy, especially if you are sociable. And for the same reason, moving to a new area can make people happy because if you moved to a new area you would meet lots of people. Here we have demonstrated one that we understand what our partner was saying, two that we agree with what our partner said and three that we can link our contribution with the contribution of our partner. 
This makes the examiners go crazy, so make sure you do it. Don't say I agree, and definitely don't say I disagree. So then, Bruce, give your response again, but this time, don't say I agree, and please link it to what Monica actually said. Yeah, so if you are sociable, yeah. right, meeting new people could make you very happy. Yeah, totally, yeah. Also then, so could move into a new area. Uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. Because if you moved to a new area, yeah. you would also meet, meet new, new people, people right? right? Yeah, totally, bros. That's a really good point. Oh, thank you. Um, ew. But like, I saw people want to move to a new area because they think their lives will be better. But sometimes, don't you think that like, it's better to accept what you have? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, for example, I am a perfect and I accept that. And I'm very happy about this situation. Mm. Great. Well, yeah. But in some situations, accepting what you have could like be a really bad thing. Like if you're really ugly and you've got terrible fashion sense and you've got no friends, then maybe you should work to like improve yourself and like learn new skills, like how to dress or something. Uh, what are you trying to say, uh, Monica? Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. And now you have about a minute to decide which two things would make the biggest difference to people's lives? Um, Bruce, should I go first or would you like to? You go first. Okay, what? no problem. Um, I think meeting new people makes the biggest difference, like I said before. Oh, and also getting more money. Like, I love money because with money, people can have more freedom to do what they want to do. Um, Bruce? I've got nothing to say oh, to oh, you. Okay. Um, so yeah, making money and meeting new people for me. <laughs> yeah. You may have a partner that is very shy and doesn't want to talk. Maybe that person is you. Remember, the examiner cannot ask you questions in part three. If you don't talk, then you don't talk. This is a problem for you, but also for your partner. If your partner doesn't talk, then you must ask them questions. Ask them questions and ask them questions. If they give you one-word answers, then expand their answer. Take their answer, put it into a sentence, say, is that what you meant? And demonstrate to the examiner that you are interested in what your partner has to say, especially for part two of part three, where you have to choose one or two of the prompts to answer a question. This demonstrates that you can negotiate with your partner towards an outcome, that you can take a problem and try to solve it with other people in English. Oh my gosh, Bruce, I'm really sorry about what I it's said, right, okay? So right. like, what do you think? Well, I think that making money, getting more money is important, like yeah, you said, yeah. <laughs> but we need two things. So can you uh -huh. think of another one? Um, yeah, well, like, money's totally important, but, like, you can't have money without other people, can you? So, like, money comes from other people, yeah. Yeah, so, like, you can't have money also without a skill. Uh-huh. So, maybe we should say, meeting new people, people and, and learning, learning new, new skills. skills. Yeah? Yeah, that's a really great idea, bro. So, like, we say yeah. learning new skills and yeah, meeting right, new people, right. yeah? Oh, awesome! Okay, yeah, we so did we did it. Now, what? Go well, us! Can I go? Can I go home yeah. now, yeah? And that's what we want to see. So let's go again, but this time using all eight pieces of my advice. Number one, when part three starts, turn your chairs inwards. Number two, as soon as you are invited to talk, ask your partner, should I go first or would you like to? Number three, don't be too personal. Number four, listen actively. Nod your head, shake your head, make sounds, hmm, yes, really. Demonstrate to your partner that you are listening. Number five, be happy, because being happy improves your intonation and therefore your pronunciation. Number six, never say I agree, never say I disagree. Number seven, always link your contributions to what your partner said before. And number eight, ask your partner questions. Ask what their opinion is. Demonstrate to the examiner that you are negotiating with your partner towards a result, towards an outcome. 
So then, are you ready for round two? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I guess we could do another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, we can do another one. Yeah. One <laughs> now I'd like you to talk about something together for about two minutes. Here are some situations in which some people always say exactly what they think and other people don't. And a question for you to discuss. First, you have some time to look at the task. Yeah, so like, you people and she have some time to do work, internet, classroom, right? You finished? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. yeah. yeah. Now, talk to each other about whether it's a good idea to always say exactly what you think. Uh, should I go first, or would you like to? Uh, don't worry, Monica, I uh, will go first this time. Okay, great. So, I think that it's really important to say what you think in shops yeah. and restaurants, yeah. because you're paying for a service. Oh, yeah. If the service is not good enough, then I uh -huh. think you have a right to complain. Yeah, yeah, like if you pay for something and it's not good enough, then you definitely should complain and be honest. But like, what about friends and family? Like, you're not paying them, right? Like, if one of my girls is wearing a really ugly yeah. dress, I definitely tell them because mm -hmm. I don't want them to go out and be laughed at or anything. Yeah, well, one <laughs> you know? of I haven't got any friends, but oh. at university, uh, yeah. I usually, I often complain. I think it's important Wait, to be what? honest. Uh, for example, one of my philosophy professors, uh -huh. he clearly misunderstood Nietzsche's idea of eternal recurrence, right? Oh so I had no choice but to complain. Wow, Bruce, you go to university? Yeah, yeah, I like, do. I didn't even know that. Why didn't I know that? Never asked I didn't me about know it, that. Before. But like, you really should be careful being honest mm. in class discussions because remember the teacher gives you your That's grades, true. That's right? True. I guess it's a bit similar to at work, you know? Yeah. Because your boss gives totally you your yeah, money. Right, so you don't want to argue with them too much yeah, either, do yeah. you? Yeah. That's, that'd yeah. be a really bad idea. But the mm. internet is different to that because it's so anonymous. Like, you can say anything you want and no one yeah, does it to like, you. I say anything I want on the internet. I'm always yeah. completely honest. Like, I even post on this stupid YouTube channel, uh -huh. Smash English. Uh -huh. yeah, that's rubbish. Smash Nobody English, that sounds so lame. <laughs> so stupid. Thank you. Now you have about a minute to decide in which situation people should be most careful about what they say. Well, as yeah. we said before, I think that the classroom and at work are the places where you need to be most careful. Yeah, you're right. Like yeah. we said before, but like... Where is it more dangerous, to be honest? Like, if my professor gets angry yeah. with me, he can't fire me, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're totally right. Like, if your professor is really angry at you, he can't really yeah, do so much. We agree, then, that at work, sometimes yeah. you should be careful about what you say, yeah? Oh, totally. Yeah, I agree. Right, oh, my God. We were, like, a really yeah, good right, team together. Done, yeah? Can we do it we again? Finished. I really enjoyed right, it. I'm done. It was really we're fun. Done. We're done. <laughs> And with that, we are finished. Now you know what to do to pass part three of the Cambridge First Certificate speaking exam. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below. My name is Toby. This was Smash English.